everyone. Welcome to Lighthouse Stamping with Lorraine. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator in Vancouver, Washington. Today we're going to be doing what I call flying by the seat of my pants. <laughs> Nothing else. I have a stamp set I picked out and when I looked at it I said oh it needs to be watercolored. But besides that I really haven't done anything else with it. So I have nothing to show you because we're going to do it all live. Well, as live as I can get at the moment. So before I get started, remember to like, subscribe, and share my videos. I really appreciate everybody who has done that. Um, in the description below, once I have a description of the product, all the products I used and what I've made, I will put those below. Um, you'll find a link to my online store if you need a Stamping Up demonstrator. I'd love to be yours. There's also my email address if you have any questions and there is a link to my Facebook group. So, the celebration and mini catalog go in effect on January 5th. And I'm gonna tell you, I, I am filming this on the Thursday before Christmas, because I'm planning on taking some time off with my family next week through the holiday. So, I'm doing this early. And so, I just thought I'd mention that. Um, right now, we're waiting for an ice storm to arrive. It's about 18 degrees outside with wind chill about minus two outside and they're telling us now we're going to have anywhere from about a half inch to a three quarters of an inch of ice by tomorrow so i figured i better get this done before tomorrow because chances are we won't have power <laughs> so let's move on to what i decided to use this is in the celebration it's called in the country i'll try to get it out of the light so you can see it better and there's two beautiful scenes in there and to me they both screamed watercolor so we're going to emboss one and the other one we're going to do with stays on and we're going to watercolor both of them and then i once i'm done coloring them then i will figure out what kind of base and stuff and versus we're going to put on the inside so like i said i have not done this i haven't even all i've done is put the backs on my stamps and that is about it but you can get this set with a 50 dollar purchase when celebration starts on the 5th of january so I also grabbed out some sheets of watercolor paper. This is five by seven. I'm not gonna cut this down until after I'm done watercoloring because it does help give me a place to hang on to when I'm working. Um, and I'm not sure which direction we're gonna go yet. This one I think will go this way and the other one will be horizontal. But we're gonna do this one first. This one we're gonna emboss. That one we're gonna do stays on. And I am gonna use my apparatus for this because I, there's so much detail in this set that I need to make sure that it uh, holds up well. So since I'm going to be embossing, I'm going to go ahead and do the one with stays on first. Now, you don't need this. These are cling mount stamps. You don't need the extra padding in there. So we'll take that out. Set that off to the side. And I'm going to grab my one of my pieces of watercolor paper. And I usually don't like to go right to the edge, sort of pick an area, line it up. This is just a piece of grid paper that I've put in here so I have the ability to line up everything straight. And this is the woodland scene. I'm going to put a line of that up in the center where I want it. And I'm going to put my magnets down. Be careful not to clank your magnets together. They can break. I also have to be careful. I've told other people that this is a steel case desk, so the magnets stick to my desk really well. <laughs> so we're gonna do stays on. So we're gonna mount this on here first. And I wanted, to, you need to use stays on because we are going to use water painters. And I've already loaded these up with water. And if you've ever used the, or haven't used these, they go on opposite, not righty-tighty, go opposite of what you're thinking. So, and I just have a glass, I put them in. I've also got another glass with some cup here with some water, just plain water, in case I need a little more for doing our water coloring. And you can't really see it, but I will sort of show you. I have stacks of ink, and there's two more big stacks. I'm not gonna drag them all out because I don't know what colors I'm gonna use yet. So, but we know we know to use stays on on this one. And so we're gonna 
get this all done up. And I'm going to turn this so it's a little easier for me. Remember I've always said, turn your work so it's easier. And I'm going to grab my stamp case and put that right below so I can really get in here with the stays on. And the other reason I'm, there's so much detail in this that I'm using the Stamparata so I get all that wonderful detail. Well, we'll see where we're at. Now, I don't know what I did with my, I have a little ball I use, but I don't know what I did with it. So I'll we'll use the side of my hand. Yeah, not dark enough yet. And this is gonna be the same with the verse mark. We'll probably have to do the verse mark probably three times the watercolor about, or this stays on about three times. I like watercoloring, I don't do it enough. And like I said, when I got this set, it just sort of screamed at me. And since we have this storm coming in in Christmas and I wanted to get my filming for next week done, I just figured we'd just wing it, which I've never done before. That's one of the reasons I'm looking forward to getting my subscriptions up so I can do lives and then I can wing it and you guys can help me pick out colors and what we're gonna do and give input. Right now I get to talk to myself and give my own input. Of course, I do have two harsh critics in the house. My mother and my sister are if they don't like something, trust me, they tell me. Oh, I think we're gonna have to go one more to get the darkness in those trees. I think my stays on may need some re-inking too. Stays on is just like any other ink. You have to re-ink your pads occasionally. And I've been using mine quite a bit lately. pressure on those. And if I'm sorry if it's a little dark, it's dark outside. The clouds are rolling in. They suspect the snow is supposed to start any time. And I've got every light on I have in here. That looks pretty good. So I'll pull that up so you can see that. Just by itself, it's beautiful. Yeah, and this is our watercolor paper that is in our catalog. It's five by seven. It's a nice size. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just take this off because I need stays on cleaner to clean this. And I'm just going to go set this aside where it won't be in the way. And, oh, this video I may have to get up a few times. And I'm going to grab my other plate because this machine does come with machine tool it does come with two plates and it does make doing projects easier so you can just set them aside and clean later or if you want to do multiple things so this is this sort of reminds me of an old castle I know I'm rattling that's what it does it's just old vintage and I love vintage whoop don't do that We'll get this lined up in here and yes I'm going to cover my stays on in just just a moment I'm going to go clear up to the top on this one oh someone asked me a while back about this and I don't know if I ever answered it if you see I have two two dimensionals in there and there's the plastic lid you want to keep that plastic lid right over the top of your stays on so it doesn't dry out and the stays on does have a smell I actually like the smell of it, but <laughs> you want to keep that in there. And the easiest way to do that is just with two dimensionals and then it's always in the right spot. So now my advertisement is done for it stays on. I'm going to pop that right in the center here. Mount it up. And now I'm going to grab my embossing buddy. I'm going to move a few things out of my way. This is just the package that the stamp... Aqua painters come in. I'm just going to set that off to the side. With all this stuff here, I don't have a lot of desk space. And we have so much east wind right now. It's blowing about 30, 35, gusting up towards 50 right now. And so 
definitely need this little guy. This really helps when you have static. My poor kittens, you try to run your hand over the kittens and their hair scans straight up. It's quite funny, but I don't think they think it's that funny. So we'll grab our verse mark. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to see it. Sorry, I'm having to put my head in here a little bit. Yep, need to do it a couple more times. Well, when this video is done, you can tell me if you like the winging when I just go for it. You can see how I create when I just start thinking about something. I had some one of my friends ask me, how do I come up with all this stuff? I said, well, usually I just grab the stamp sets and I look at the stamp sets and if any dies with them. And then I look at verses that might go with them. You know, what I think about what I'm going to make. I'm going to give this one more shot. And then I sort of get a picture in my head what I want to make. Then I start looking for paper and colors. And then I try to decide, you know, my coloring or I'm just all ink or, you know, what I'm doing. And it just slowly comes to me. And that's sort of how this project's going to work. So we're just going to slide this out really gently. Not to touch the paper. You can barely see it in there, I think. I'm going to set this down just like that and go set it with the other one. Off around the other room. And then we're going to grab our embossing, gold embossing powder, which I'm going to be placing another order here soon and on the 5th of, Jan the 5th of January. So, um, I did not pre-order everything that I wanted. I'm waiting until the 5th of January. And so we've got the gold embossing. I've got my heat embossing tool off to the side here. And like I said before, I don't, I don't keep all my powder in one of these tubs. But the gold I do because, and I think Claire's the other one I have in there. And I'm gonna shake this around a little bit. Oh, that looks like a good cover. It's just, uh, when you do use one color, a lot of you know colors quite frequently, um, it's easier to put them in a tub. And this better be on my shopping list come January 5th. Get that out of the way and get the heat tool up here real quick. And I'm just gonna grab my little pokey tool so I don't burn my fingers. Gotta warm up for just a second, then I'll really start going. There we go. Give that a good once over, it looks good. Got a couple little spots I mixed, but that's okay. That'll just add interest to it rid of that. So let me make sure I have nothing on my desk. I did also bring out uh, some scrap of some of the uh, watercolor paint ink, or paper and I'm going to grab this and I have some tissues, paper towels off to the side. And so I know we have greenery coming down here a little bit in here but we also have some bricks in here. So I think my bricks I'm going to go with, please tell me I grabbed Cajun Craze. I didn't. Just one moment. You know, it's one of those things that just came to me. I need Cajun Craze.
I'll just bring my tub over. I don't have a large space to craft in. So this is where I keep all my ink. <laughs> so I can just move it wherever I want. Like I said, I do craft in the uh, living room quite a bit. So, and as you can see your ink right off the bat. Where is the Cajun craze? It's hiding from me. There it is. I did have it out. My Spanish or French isn't very good. It was turned the wrong way. So let's go there and I'm going to grab the large aqua painter. It's dry right now and I'm going to just lay a little bit of water across this whole thing, especially where the brick area is. And there's a little button to push. You can see the water coming out there. See there's water. And I just want to layer a little bit of water across where I'm going to put those bricks or the walls. Not a lot, but not just enough to get it going. Now you could use your refills for this, but I like to just put my, um, my colors on blocks when I'm working. And so I just open them up. grab whatever color I want. Now I'm going to switch to, this is good for a lot big areas, but I'm just going to leave the cap off for now. I've got a glass. I've set it up this way. So it just makes it really easy. But I think I want the medium size. They have nice caps that cover everything. I'm going to push this one to get a little more water. And you notice I have a piece of paper underneath where I'm working too. So I'm going to add water to the block here. Like I said, you could use you could use your um, your you know, refills to do this too, but I find it just easy to use the blocks and it gives me a nice palette to work with and I can add extra colors to it if I want. And I'll probably show you that later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of paper and just see what color I'm getting. Just a little testy. That looks like blocks, to bricks to me. So we're gonna just come in here. And one thing with embossing, it sort of keeps everything inside. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of this. And I'm sorry if my head gets in the way. I'm trying to keep my head out, but just come in here. We're just flooding this with color right here. Nothing very complicated. And these are steps here. So we're gonna do a little bit in the steps. And this I think is a bush, so we're not gonna do too much just so you can see a little bit coming through. Oop, I got a little over there, but that's okay. We'll, we'll work on it. And just let it sort of come up the top. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. And I'm gonna set that aside for a moment because I'm not sure. And what I'm gonna grab is a paper towel. You need to wipe away in between see what it looks like. It looks like old bricks almost. And I think I want to go darker in a few other places. I'm going to grab a little more. No water. I'm not putting adding any more. But I'm grabbing off to the side here where I didn't put water in just to get a little more detail in this area right here. And a little darker on the steps. And do it right in here too. Once again, I'm just going to blot it a little bit. It takes a little bit for it to dry on the watercolor paper. Watercolor paper really holds up really well. But as you can see, I've added the extra color there going up the walk a little bit. I'm thinking maybe we need to add a little more darker here. So I'm just coming in here to the sides where I didn't add extra water to get a little darkness. I am no expert at this. I've self-taught on this part. The floss stuff, I've been self-taught. I said I've been doing this for years and when I first started there was virtually nothing out there it was very hard to find stamp sets it was very hard to find all kinds of things so I think that's pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and clean this off and I'm going to run a little water through it get the bulk of that out 
doesn't, if there's a little bit in it, it won't hurt, but you get the bulk of it out. And I'll turn it up for now. So now I need some greens to get the greens in here. And, hmm, I don't want to go too bright. I'm thinking maybe mossy meadow and old olive. A combination of those two, maybe. Let's start with old olive. So, oh, this is not a stamping up one, but like I said, I've been doing this a long time, so we'll just grab that one. And this one, I think we'll put a little bit of old olive on. Probably not as much though. Like that. And I've got this pretty much clean. I'm going to give it one more flood. Yeah, that's pretty good. You make sure on your paper towel. Definitely have to have paper towels for this. Excuse me, as I mentioned on my Wednesday video, since I'm filming on the same day, I still have that scratchy throat. I'm not sick, but I have a scratchy throat. So let's start with adding a little water into the center of the old olive. We'll leave the outside darker, not add any water, just into the inside. What's nice about using the blocks like this is your color palette. You can just take them in and wash them out in the sink. I'm going to take a little swatch here to see how dark that is. Not bad. So I'm just going to come in here with the green. And I've seen old steps where there's green in between the steps. You know, vines coming up. It's an abandoned building or something like that. I'm going to go in here with the old olive. I'm just going to come out here a little bit. Going right into where that brick was. And we're just going to come over here and fill any blank spaces we have. As I said, we're not going to use many colors on this one because the gold really makes it look the antique-y. Get out here a little bit. Move around the edge. Green around there. We're going to put some blue in this in a minute around there to give a little blue around that. So since we're going into a darker color now, we don't need to clean the brush, but I am going to come in here and daub off any wet on top of my embossing. So here's what we have so far. And I'm going to add just a touch of water to this, even less than I did on the other one, because I want this to be really dark. Let me just pull that off. I'm just going to add little dark highlights here and there. Like I said, it's it's just a watercolor. It's, you know, what's ever in your brain as you go. Get a little bit more. More ink than anything. Put a little dark right in here. A little bit on top of that. Like I said, you don't have to, you just have to sort of think of what you've seen in the past, different buildings, old buildings. I love looking at old architecture. Okay, let's try that off and see what we've got. Oh, I'm getting some ink around there. Oh, well. We're going to bleed some of that out. So there's our watercolor so far. I'm trying to see if there's some other places I want some more ink. I think I'll need a little dark over here. You notice I'm not adding more water to this. Keeping it pretty simple. Okay. So now I think I need I think I'm pretty much done with those colors, so I'm going to grab my napkin and I'm going to fold it a little bit because I made the mistake earlier. So that's what we have so far. Clean this up and what I'm going to do is set this aside for a moment and I'm going to take my blocks 
you know what's fun is you could do this with and just stamp down onto paper. I am just cleaning off a little bit of this ink off these and just wiping them off. I will take them out and wash them in the sink later. But right now I want to clean them off because these are my small blocks and I want to be able to use them. Now, with that being said with this mess, I always keep extra scrap paper and when I was actually working in a real job, you know, for somebody else, I would keep scrap paper that didn't have um, anything of vital importance on it. And use that. But copy paper works too when you run out of your scrap pile there. Like I said, if you're going to do several of these, you want to keep... I'm going to get rid of this piece with the extra green on it. So, now we've got this little bit here and here. And I want to add some blues to this to brighten it up a little bit. So, I'll make sure this is clean, which it is. So, what color blue do I want? Do I want a dark sky or a light sky? Let's start with some Tahitian Tide and Balmy Blue. Like I said, I have no idea how these are going to work. I'm going to grab a smaller block. It's a tiny one. I don't think I need much Tahitian Tide. We'll grab that one. And we'll grab a small block with some Balmy Blue on it. We'll start there and then we'll see what else we need to add. Maybe a little purple or some orchid oasis in there. So I'm going to come back in with the big one again. I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to add water. And I am squeezing. Not much, but I am squeezing. Right to those two areas that I got the ink on by mistake. You see the ink's almost disappearing. I'm adding enough water in there to... splotches are gone for the most part. So we're going to come in here and now I'm going to squeeze. And you're not getting a lot, just going sort of around like a halo right around this. Like that. And I think we're going to, I'm still going to use the medium size one. Add a little water to the balmy blue. And we're just going to come in here and add a little bit of balmy blue. And I don't need to go all the way to the end because I know that I'm not going, to, I'm going to be cutting this down. But if you do go to the end and you need a piece of paper, the colors we end up with, you could use it for something else. Just getting a nice coating. I'm no longer pushing on the water. And I do need a little more balmy blue. So I'm just going to wipe this off. So I don't want to add water to this. Get a little more balmy blue. This time I'm not adding any more water to my... Because there's quite a bit on there. And there's quite a bit of water still on the paper. And you could use the bigger brush if you want, but I always prefer to go slow. And I'm gonna get a little closer here. Okay, a little bit more up here. We're wiping this off a little bit. Don't need to wipe it off a whole lot because we're going into tease and hide now. I'm adding just a drop of water. If I push on the right spot, I'm going to turn this a little bit. I'm going to add, I'm just going to flick it around here a little bit. Hmm. Need some purple in this or some 
pink tones. Let me dry, do a little drying on this. Pat that off. So here's what we have so far. I think I want a little pink hue to that or purplish hue. And I'm not sure if I want, oops, definitely not Poppy Bray, Orchid Oasis or some, maybe some Highland Heather. So what I'm going to do, because I know I don't need any more balmy blue, so I'm just gonna grab it and wipe this off. And I'm gonna grab some Orchid Oasis. And I know we're done with that one, so I'll wipe that one off. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of Highland. And since I don't know what color, we're gonna put a little water in this one. And we're gonna mix it up a little bit. And I'm gonna grab one of my scratch pieces of watercolor here to see how dark that is. We could go with a little bit of that. I'm gonna grab my small one now. Use the Highland Heather in that one. A little bit different shade. So I think we'll use it a little both. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm not gonna get it, I'm not adding more water. I'm just picking up the color. We're just really lightly. I'm just adding a little bit and blending it out. Purple clouds. Yeah, we'll thin this out a little bit with some more water. As soon as we get the highlight on there. So let's get a little of the highland, then we're going to add some more water and thin all this out. Just do a little bit more water there. Okay, I'm going to put both of these over here for the moment, and I'm going to grab our big brush that is clean. Make sure I've got nice water flowing through. And I'm just going to start blending this out across my page. Until I get these blended together. I'm going to add a little more water. Make sure I don't have any streaks going there. Just blending it all in. And the reason I'm using watercolor paper because it can take the water. You could not do this much water onto regular cardstock. It would be really falling apart on you. Whoop. I just wanted a little background. It's not. It's just just enough just to add something there. Now I've decided that we need something a little more, a little more green. So I'm gonna go back to that mossy meadow. <clears throat> Grab some mossy meadow. Not adding too much water, just like one drop right in the center. I know you can tell where I'm going with this. We need a little pathway here. We can't have all that blue there. And we know the paper's gonna be cut shorter than this. But. And then once I got that, I'm gonna do a little bit more right there. This is where you can take it out and blend it a little more right into the, the blues and finish so you don't have a halo around your project. 
not adding more water, just color. Okay, let's get that and get a nice clean piece of tissue. And that's what I have so far. And I think I like that. Keep in mind, this is gonna be cut down so we can mount it on. So it's pretty wet. So we're gonna let it sit off to the side and I'm gonna color the other one. You see how this is picking up some brown hues, okay from the blues, which is fine, because, you know, brown. So, I sort of like that, you know, with the green and the other. So, hopefully you guys like it too. But we're gonna set this aside, let it dry, and we're gonna grab the other one. And before I grab it, I'm gonna clean off some blocks, because I don't think I'm gonna be using Orchid Oasis in this one. we'll leave that mossy meadow there because I think mossy meadow will be good and I think we need some brown some early espresso would be nice Guys, I think I'm gonna start with the trees I got mossy meadow oh which we use soft succulent eating ever I want to stay not bright. Let's go evening evergreen. It's a no, let's go soft succulent, not quite as dark. Or pear pizzazz. We'll use pear pizzazz. So you're gonna see how I, my brain works when I do these things. It doesn't work. <laughs> So, I'm going to come over here, grab a tissue, I'm going to also close up these inks so I don't uh, end up with ink all over, and clean out these brushes a little bit so they're clean for me now. I had green on that one, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And this one had a little bit of blue. Tissues are required. And I'm going to get rid of this one in a minute, I think. Got one more good side. So, what we have is like a little road here. With lots of green, and there's green here, and the fence. So, I'm going to go for the brown first. So, we're going to go, and I'm not adding but one drop into that early espresso. And I'm gonna come up where these tire tracks are. I'm gonna see how dark this is. Ah, it's okay. I'm just gonna ride in here where these tire tracks are lying. And I'm gonna sort of just carry it down the page. Another set over here. Go right up in the trees. And I'm just carrying this down. So we know we're cutting the card, but we know there's. And then we got the fence here, and I'm going to make that. I'm going to pick up a little more of this. It's off to the side a little bit. Espresso on the fence very lightly, just going across it. It doesn't have to be colored in all the way, that's why it's called watercoloring. Not like that. That looks good to start off. So I'm gonna clean this brush off a little bit. for the moment and we grab that evening evergreen so before I go any further I've got a side here I'm gonna dab this off and make sure there's nothing wet we don't have the embossing this time but I want to make sure I don't have stuff bleeding too badly so let's go with this evening evergreen first and 
Let's go up into these trees. And you could use multiple colors, but I'm going to keep this one pretty simple. Actually, I think I grabbed Mossy Meadow, but that's okay. I like Mossy Meadow. You could do any color green trees you want. You could just shade of spruce, whatever. So there's the trees. I think we're gonna leave the trees just like that. Like I said, this one's, you don't have the embossing, so it doesn't sit on top of the embossing. I'm gonna rinse this out a little bit, get rid of that green. We are gonna need another green for probably two greens. So let me set these two over here out of my way, just in case I need them again. So we need, that was pear pizzazz. We need two colors of green and we need something that's, that's pear pizzazz. And I need something so brighter. Ooh, parakeet party. Let's see how this looks. We will always change it if it doesn't work. That's why I have the scrap paper out here. Add a little water to this. I think we use that for a little bit of highlighting. So, it's not too dark. We've got a lot of feel to do here. So let me clean this brush out so we can use pear pizzazz with that one. If you have multiple brushes, then it does go a little faster because you're not always stopping to clean, but I only have these, so we're gonna go with it. So I'm gonna go with this lovely parakeet party. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap in here. I'm gonna go right around the, and I'm just gonna tap some parakeet party in here. Here a little bit and in the middle here a little bit more I think I'll run that right down to the bottom here and we'll do we'll come back to the parakeet party if we want a little more now we're gonna grab the pear pizzazz come in here. You notice I'm trying to stay in somewhat up the top here because we're going to add some blue here in a minute. I'm just going to come in between here and pop some parakeet part. Not a whole lot of difference between there, so we'll add a little more parakeet in a minute, a little darker. The less, more water you add, the darker it is, or I mean lighter it is, the more water you, let's start that over. Less water, the darker it is. More water, the lighter. Got some white here, so I'm just cover it with that little parakeet to cover that up. Or pill, pear pizzazz, sorry. Just hitting all those white spots here. And I'm gonna grab, and I'm gonna grab off to the side here where I did not add any extra water. in here just put a little bit here and there I'm going right over the brown lightly so it doesn't bleed because it will bleed if you get too much in there so I'm just adding a little bit more darker colors in here add a little more contrast I'll just carry that one down a little bit too and I'll come back over here and carry this down a little bit So here's what we have so far. I've got a little light space right here, I noticed. I got a little more, more color there. I'm gonna take that right up into the trees. If you see it's a white spot, it's just, just like that. So time to clean these out. 
I mean, you could use a lot of bigger blocks if you want. I prefer to use the smaller blocks for the ink. Um, but it's whatever works for you. I'm just cleaning my brushes a little bit. There we go. And I'm gonna wipe off, grab this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm wiping this off. Because I am done with the brown and the greens. And I like to use these smaller blocks for some blues. Now the other one we used, balmy blue is such a good color for sky. We could go really bright and we could use, I wonder, Coastal Cabana. Let's put one on a small block here and see what we've got. my medium size. Ooh, I think that would make a very beautiful sky. That's Coastal Cabana. And the highlights, I'm wondering how Bermuda Bay would be in there. So I'll grab the smaller one for the highlights, add a little water. Oh, very nice. But I'm thinking I want the Coast Cabana to be my highlights and the Bermuda Bay to be my base. So I'm going to, since I have a large area to cover, I'm gonna go ahead and use my big one for the Bermuda Bay. We'll use Coast Cabana as the light. So, so this is Bermuda Bay. I'm loading up my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start adding my color. And when I get up here, I'm just started tapping right around the greens. So I get up in there so there's not, you know, we can see blue behind them. But I'm trying not to bleed the greens. So I don't want to get too wet right there. And just go right around here. Can get a little coastal in that one anyhow. And oh, need a little more water too. It's a little dark. It's okay. We can bleed it out a little bit. And I'm gonna turn this around. Oh, got a little too much there. That's okay. That's why it's called watercolor. Watercolor. It's just bleed this out a little bit. It's a darker sky cloud in the sky. We'll just take this blue right down. I'm gonna get a little bit more water on this. Clean a little of that blue out. Try to brush a little bit of that up. So I got a little more than I wanted right there, but it's okay. Get over on this side a little bit. More color. That's what we have so far. Now I'm going lighter or darker, so I'm gonna go right in with this onto the Colsa Cabana. And I'm just gonna add a little bit up here. Just to add that green tinge to the sky. there just dabbing right around the trees and yes there's a line right there so we'll get a little more water out here try to brush that out a little bit 
this is an ominous cloud coming in, so we're just going to leave him there. And then I got a little more color in there over that green than I wanted. So I'm going to grab Old Olive. Old Olive is darker. I always call it the big, big brother of the pear pizzazz. bit but not too much water and we're just going to try to darken this up a little bit so it's not as blue a little green and I think what we'll do is we'll just add a few highlights over here so it doesn't look so obvious leave it like that. So let me get these into my glass. I just have glass holding all this. Let me get some of this wet stuff out of the way. And let's build a card with these. I'm going to wipe these off. I'm going to grab a clean paper towel. Well, almost clean. I'm going to dog this off. We're going to grab the heat gun in a minute. We're going to heat this up to make sure it's dry because it is wet. But that's what we got right now. You can see the striations in the, those looks like a sky. But we're only going to have, you know, just a small piece out of there. So, let me just wipe some of this off so I don't have ink everywhere. I hope that you've all enjoyed watching me do this. We're not done yet. I'm gonna make some cards out of this. And obviously I haven't chose the colors I'm gonna make yet, but we're gonna hit both of these. Well, this one's dry. That's the first one we did. Get a little heat gun here to dry it off faster so you can continue. Or you could just let it naturally dry and then come back. So I have to decide do I want these single mat or a double mat? And I'm thinking maybe just a single mat card. Colors, colors. Oh, what color should we do? Hmm, Cajun Craze. I don't want to go too dark. So I'm going to grab some paper out here. This is how I do this. Um, do, 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 Cajun Craze may be too dark. We'll find out in a minute. Actually, I think that Cajun Craze would look really nice. I think the Old Olive would look nice on that. And I'm thinking... We'll double map this and I think we'll put it on ivory card base or very vanilla, I should say. So let me grab a piece of very vanilla. <clears throat> like I said, you get to see how I come up with the things I come up with. So we're gonna do very vanilla as our base. And I'll grab a sheet of that. Now I'm going to go ahead and use this. And I do it this way. Okay. We are going to go ahead and I'm I know I'm using my trimmer to score. We're gonna score this at five and a half. I flip it around and cut it at four and a quarter. So there's one. And here 
colors too. So that means if I want a green base, olive green, I don't have scrap. Oh yes, I do. I always try to use up scraps before I cut into a full piece of paper. I just have these little sleeves and I keep a small supply in here so I can take it on. If I just want a color, I can take it on the road. So standard map for this would be five and a quarter by four. So is this five and a quarter? No, it's not. So we'll go to five and a quarter by four. So that's one. And then I decide to use page and craze on the other one. on that. Nope. Oh, so we'll go ahead and cut it this way at four. The reason I'm cutting this direction, I can get two mats out of this or another card base. Um, four by five and a quarter. Alrighty, and now we need to cut these pieces. So we know that this one is going to be vertical. And if this is four inches, then we want this one at three and three fourths. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna start by taking off, looking at the measurement here. I'm going to take off about a half inch from both sides. And what I'm going to do is slowly wheedle my way down and pick the sides I like the best. Okay, so we are at, there's right where I need it. So I know I want to turn a little off the stop here. And then I need this one to be five inches. So that is that one that will go on here onto our very vanilla cardstock. I chose very vanilla because it's sort of an antique type look. So this one, we need the same dimensions. So we need about five inches and we've got seven. So let's take off about three quarters on each side and see where we're at. That's five inches right there. And that actually looks pretty good to me. So we'll go right there at five inches. And we'll take a little bit off here, about a half inch. And we said we needed this to be, oh, I lost my head at measurement. Three and three fourths. And that will give us this piece. Now, versus, I need birthday cards. So I'm gonna stamp directly on this right here and I'm gonna grab a stamp set that has a great birthday verse that I really do like. And that is the Frame for, Let, for Florets. Wishing you a beautiful birthday. Okay. There we go. Since there is no um, verses with this one, I do need a mat. So just for a moment, I don't have a mat on my desk. I've either stamped this now so that I don't have a problem. So we know that, let me match these up to the right ones. This is the Cajun Craze. This is this one. That means that this is a horizontal card, this way. This one is gonna be vertical. So I need, I used a lot of colors in this, but I think I'm gonna pull in the Mossy Meadow. 
for the inside. And I need a block. I know this video is running a little longer, but I just thought you might like to see my process, what I do when I design something new. Now I'm going to go towards the top. But the reason I like to stamp before I mount everything, if I make a mistake, it's easier to cut one of these than try to take this all apart. So let's clean that and let me grab my stamp and cleaner here. We use the same verse. except I'm going to do it in Cajun craze because that's the matte layer we're using on the card. And this one will be a vertical card this way. Like that. And then we'll start mounting. And we'll grab our bone for, ooh. See what I just did. Luckily, we're covering that up. So I'm going to mount this on this. This watercolor paper, it's warped from the water and stuff. I would recommend, when I do watercolor paper, I usually use tear and tape. Because it really does help hold this card down better than glue. Glue, you have to hold it in place. And this does a much better job. Oh. Actually, while I got this out, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the tear and tape on this one as well. This one we're going to mount on the Cajun Craze. Oh, well, they are right. Someone just hollered it's snowing. It is snowing. I really don't care. I'm not going outside. It's too cold. And I gave us a quarter inch border on this. Line it up carefully since we are. That's close enough. Now I'll grab some glue. Oh, this is the new bottle. Oh, well. he was the handiest one. I grab the right uh, yes. there's one You can watercolor with any stamp set. I just, like I said, these screamed out to me watercolor. You could use watercolor pencils on this. You could use anything on it you wanted, but I thought actually watercoloring would be fun. And then we'll glue this one in. Now I haven't stamped an envelope or anything for this one, which, you know, I probably, since there's nothing small in this set to go with it, I would probably grab one of the small flowers out of the flowering florets and stamp on the front of my envelope, which it does have these cute little em and these right here work really good. And the flowering florets is framed florets. I, frame, I call them flowering, it's framed florets will be in the mini catalog starting on January 5th, unless you're a demonstrator and you can always pre-order. Oh, I'm a mess. So anyhow, here is the two cards. I'm gonna hold them up close. Sorry, not too close. There we go. So that's the first one. And here's the second one. So 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little unusual for me to do something like this, but I thought it'd be fun to show you how my brain sort of works when I do this. I just sort of lay everything out and figure it out. Now I got to go write it up and tell you what colors I used. I got a stack here, so I hope I'll remember. So thank you for joining me for today. Um, I will see you after the new year, which is coming up this weekend. Well, not in my case, Christmas is coming up, but you know what I mean. So, um, Please let me know if you like this type of video where I just create on the fly when we're together or or not. Um, also, um, I've done some one sheet wonders where we stamp the whole sheet and make cards. I really would be interested to know if you'd like to see more of that. Um, your, your input is taken into advisement and I really like to hear from you. So with all that being said, have a good day and a nice weekend and thank you for joining me. Goodbye.